Hello everyone, this is Rohan and I welcome you all to my second video lecture on eccentrically loaded columns. In this video lecture, I am going to take up a problem on the stress distribution on a hollow circular cylindrical column loaded by a eccentrical load. Now, before that, let me inform you that in my first lecture, I have covered the introduction to eccentrically loaded columns and I highly recommend you to first watch that video and then start watching this video to get the entire concept clearly. I am posting a link of that video in the description below. Alright, now let's start with today's problem that is a hollow circular column of length 6 meter, external diameter 220 mm and internal diameter 180 mm is fixed at one end and free at the other. If the column carries a load of 180 kilonewton applied at a distance 50 mm from the column axis, then determine the extreme fiber stresses. Also sketch the stress distribution diagram. Take capital E for column material as 100 GPA. If you are from Mumbai University, then this is a very common type of problem that appears in almost all the papers of structural analysis. Uh, this usually comes for 8 to 10 marks. Alright, now uh, let us break it down step by step. So firstly, what I would like to show is a uh, uh, elevation of a column here. Now I'm going to start writing the given data here based on whatever I have here. So here what I have is the length. The length is given as 6 meter but I'm going to convert everything into mm. Well I'm going to convert all lengths into millimeter and all forces into newton. So let's write L as 6000 mm. 6 meter is 6000 mm. Second, I have to show the internal and external diameter. For that, I'll have to show you this column from a plan point of view. So I'm going to draw the plan of the column and uh, just so that you can see it clearly, I have enlarged the view a bit, okay? So if you see from the top here, you will get to see this, but of course this is enlarged a bit, okay? So external diameter, this is the external diameter. I can even show it in the uh, this part also. So this is the external diameter and that is given as 220 mm. Now this is the internal diameter small d. Obviously I cannot show it here because it is hidden inside. So that small d is given as 180 mm. 180 mm. Okay it is fixed at one end and free at other. We will take this up later. I don't need to show this to you right now. Now here, let's uh, consider on this sentence, the column carries a load of 180 kilonewton applied at a distance of 50 mm from the column axis. So this being a symmetrical column section, the column axis will pass right through the center. That is this point in plan and this point in the elevation. So let's see So this is your column axis. Here, this is the column axis. And here from the top, as you can see, through this, the column axis will pass. Okay. Now, the load is at a distance of 50 mm from the column axis. Now, 50 mm could be either to the left. Sorry, 50 mm could either be to the right or either to the left. It does not matter. If it is not given in the problem, you can take it either to the left or either to the right. Only due to that, the stress distribution diagram will change. Only the diagram will change. Even the values will come the same. Alright. So, here I have taken it to the left. Okay. So, this is P. Here also I have shown you the position of P in plan. And this uh, P is nothing but 180 kilonewton, which I am going to write as 180 into 10 raised to the power 3 newton. And it is at a distance E from x. Similarly, this is at a distance E from x. And what is the value of E? E is given as 50 mm. This is nothing but the eccentricity of the column. E is 50 mm. All right. Now next, what is given as capital E, that is the Young's modulus, 100 into 10 raised to the power, okay, here it is given as 100 GPA, that is gigapascal, and 1 gigapascal is 10 raised to the power 3 Newton per mm square, so here I am going to write the value of capital E as 100 into 10 raised to the power 3 Newton per mm square. Now students just see that, 
here I have drawn the elevation as well as the plan of the column just to show where exactly everything acts. This need not be drawn by you in the exam. If you want to, you can, but you can save the time by not drawing it. But make sure you have the concept clear in your mind that where the axis is, where the load is acting, what is the distance E, all of this you must have clear in your mind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those values that I had, uh, that were the given data here and uh, then I'll start finding out one by one uh, all the properties of the columns. The first is the cross-sectional area of the column. What is the area of a circle? It is pi by 4 into d square but since this is a hollow circular cylinder the area will be pi by 4 into capital D square minus small d square. Here simply I'll have to put the value of capital D as 220 square and of small d as 180 square and here I get the answer 12566.37 mm square. Alright, so this is the cross-sectional area of the column. Second is the moment of inertia of the column. Here moment of inertia of a circle is pi by 4 into d raised to the pi by 64 into d raised to the power 4 but since this is a hollow circular cylinder it will be pi by 64 into d raised to the power 4 minus small d raised to the power 4 here also simply by putting the value of capital d and small d you can get the answer as 63.46 into 10 raised to the power 6 mm raised to the power 4 be very careful about your units and make sure all of your units of length are same, all of your units of forces are same. Alright, then to the third property that is the center of gravity of the column from the extreme fiber. Obviously, this is a symmetrical fiber, therefore, central of center of gravity will be at the center, uh, will be at the center of the circle. Okay, so now that is nothing but capital D by 2. Capital D is 220 by, uh, divided by 2, that will give us 110 mm. So, Y is 100. And 10 mm. Now we will have to find out the section modulus of the column, which is nothing but z equals to i by y. Here the value of i will be taken from here, that is 63.46 into 10 raised to the power 6, and here the value of y will be taken as 110. So here I get the answer as 576.91 into 10 raised to the power 3 mm raised to the power 3. Again, be very careful about the units. Here, mm raised to the power 4 divided by mm. So, here, mm raised to the power 3. Then, finally, we will find the effective length of the column. What is the effective length of the column dependent upon? It depends upon the end column conditions. Okay, column end conditions. So, here, one end is fixed and the other end is free. So, in that, the capital L is twice of small l. Here small l value is given as 6000 mm so therefore capital L will be 12000 mm okay now just see that here just by changing the support conditions your value of L can keep on changing all right then again this five uh, along with the given data I have taken this five data that we found out a i y z and L and let us start finding out the rest of the stuff. Here, I'm going to start finding out the maximum bending moment, m equals to p into e into sec l by 2 root over p by ei. Now, this formula has been derived in my first lecture. This is nothing but your second formula and I have taken enough time to derive it. Uh, so, if you have any doubts regarding this, you can see that video. Alright, so now... Here you see there are so many terms here, there is a high scope of making a mistake. So what I would prefer to do is, first I will try to find out this sec term, okay? Sec L by 2 into root over P by EI and then I'll simply put the value of P, E and that term. So here I am finding out the value of sec L by 2 into root over P, I. Please see here that this L is capital L which is the effective length. So by putting the values here, L is 12,000 root over, of, of course divided by 2, root over P is 180 into 10 raised to the power 3, E is uh, 100 into 10 raised to the power 3, 
and then uh, I we had found out as 63.46 into 10 raised to the power 6. Now, if you solve this bracket, entire bracket, you will get the answer in radian. That is 1.01 radians. Now, in your scientific calculate calculator, usually the normal mode is in degrees. If you can change the uh, mode to radian, you can directly find out the answer of this sec. But however, I have seen that some students are not comfortable in changing the modes of their calci. So you would rather want this to be in degrees. Now, how to convert radian to degrees? You have to simply multiply it by 180 and divided by pi. So 1.01 multiplied by 180 divided by pi will give you the answer in degrees that is 57.87 degrees and now you can simply find out the sec of this which means 1 by cos of 57.87 degree it comes out to be 1.88. Alright so here we will now input the values. So p is the value of P is 118 to 10 raised to the power 3. The value of E is 50. And the entire value of this sec is 1.88. So if you calculate that, you get that 16.92 into 10 raised to the power 6 Newton mm. Newton mm. Again, be careful about the units. Okay. Now the last two things. First is maximum fiber stress. That is sigma max equals to P by A plus M by Z. P is 118 to 10 to the power 3. A is 1.0 uh, sorry 12566.37 plus M. The value of M is 16.92 into 10 to the power 6. And Z, the value of Z is 576.91 into 10 to the power 3. I highly, highly, highly recommend you please find out these two terms separately. That means this is 14.32 and this is 29.32. Now, why did I ask you to find this separately? Because if you have seen my previous video, P by A is nothing but the direct stress. So you get the value of direct stress separately. And M by Z is nothing but the bending stress. So this is nothing but your bending stress. Uh, there is one more uh, advantage to it. I'll come to it later. So if you add that up, you get the maximum uh, fiber stress. That is 43.64 Newton per mm square. Lastly, we will have to find out the minimum fiber stress that is sigma minimum equals to P by A minus P by Z. Now, you have already found out the value of P by A separately and M by Z separately. So you do not need to go for this huge calculation once more. You can directly write it as 14.32 minus 29.32. And here you will get it as minus 15 Newton per mm square. This was what is asked of you. Extreme fiber stresses. So maximum stress is 43.64 Newton per mm square. And minimum fiber stress is minus 15 uh, Newton per mm square. The positive sign here indicates that this maximum stress is compressive. And this negative sign indicates that the minimum fiber stress is actually tensile in nature. All right. I will take these two values and do the last step. That is, you have to sketch the stress distribution. Now, students, you have to draw this diagram. I told you that the first two diagrams were optional for you, but this one you have to draw. All right, so let's see. I am just drawing the top of the column. As you can see, I have discontinued the column at the bottom. And here, obviously, this length is the 220 mm. This is 220 mm. So through the center of this, I'm going to pass the centroidal axis. And as you know, to the left of it at a distance of 50 mm, I have 180 kilonewton acting, isn't it? So this is the problem that we solved. And uh, based on that, uh, we have got the value of uh, sigma max and sigma minimum. Now, sigma max... <coughs> All right. Uh, the uh, extreme stresses will actually occur at the extreme ends of this column. So let me extend this so that I can draw the diagram. Furthermore, I will draw the zero line. So this is the zero stress line. At this part, that means the part from the central axis, on the side of the central axis where the load is, okay, there the maximum uh, stress will occur. That means here I can plot 43.64. If this is the positive side, then obviously the top one will be the negative side. 
and always remember the minimum stress will occur at the side of the uh, centroidal axis where the load is not there so therefore here i can plot sigma minimum minus 15 point mm if this side is positive obviously this side is negative and the distribution of the stress here is linear so therefore from here to here i will simply join it by a straight line now obviously here i will mark it as positive and here i will mark it as negative this completes your entire problem along with the stress distribution diagram this is the stress distribution diagram now before i end this video i would like to make certain comments first is this minus 15 newton per mm square indicates that this is a tensile stress right now as far as practicality is concerned uh, tensile stress is not at all de desired in columns so therefore uh, obviously this is a problem whatever the values are given to you you have to solve it however when you start practicing you have to make sure that this is not the case with your column the easiest way to uh, eliminate this is by reducing the value of e okay if you bring the e closer then automatically your bending stress reduces and automatically this uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, tensile sites gets zero or maybe even you get compressive values here all right so this is one and secondly it is not necessarily that in all your problems in the exam you will get negative value here you might get positive 43.64 and here positive 15 here also so in that case you will have to take the 15 here and then also you can join it by this line i'm just mentioning it here so that you don't think that sigma minimum should always come in negative no it will not always come in negative it can also come in positive also all right and uh, based on the different uh, values uh, sorry based on the different end conditions the different uh, values of effective length will also affect the value of sigma max and sigma minimum isn't it all right so that's all for today i hope you have understood this if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below thank you for your time